Our astronomer uh, Mark Thompson is with us. Bemoaning what all stargazers bemoan. Like pollution. They've got a point, actually. I've not seen a star over London in years. Good job the three wise men didn't start out here in Shepherd's Bush. I know. They never found the stable. Yeah. Here's Mark shedding some light on the need for darkness. Night falls and millions of street lamps switch on across Britain. But all this lighting has an unfortunate side effect. Known as sky glow, light pollution, shown in this satellite image of Britain, is making the stars harder to see. But there are a few places left where night still gets seriously dark. Galloway Forest Park is a massive wilderness, miles from the sky glow of big cities. It gets so dark here that it's been designated the UK's first dark sky park, and it's perfect for stargazing. There are only five dark sky parks in the world. This forest was credited by the International Dark Sky Association for being almost as black as a photographer's dark room. A group of one-show viewers is braving the freezing conditions in the heart of the forest to see stars at their best. Isn't it a fantastic sky that we've got? It's amazing, it's yeah. Fantastic. I tell you, I've never seen stars like this before. Well, it makes you feel small. small. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now, of course, if you're in a, a, a sort of a large city around the UK, you might just see 200 stars. Um, but here at the park, we can see at least two and a half thousand on a good night. Oh. The, the old chaps. Oh, did you, did you see a meteor? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it. Uh, Where? That's what's under four. It's typical. I was, I was just looking at you when I was talking to you. It's typical. Well, a cracking constellation for us to start off with is Orion, and that's straight ahead where we're looking now. I mean, it's all, in all the mythologies, he, he's, he's shown as a hunter or a giant, depicted with a shield or a, an animal hide kind of being held, and then there's an arm coming out the back with a club. We've got the three belt stars, which uh, are really obvious and easy to see. And many people know Orion's belt as a really obvious thing to find in the sky. And we've also got the red supergiant star called Betelgeuse, whose name actually means armpit of the giant. <laughs> Peculiar, isn't it? Huh. Now, if we took Betelgeuse and put that where the sun is, it would be large enough that it would swallow up Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars and Jupiter. It's that big. Oh, wow. We've kind of got the head up on that one. We've got the other stars depicting the other shoulder there. But the other thing that's really interesting I want to point out, can you see there, three stars there? Yeah. Yep. And can you see the middle one looks a bit fuzzy? That f fuzzy star is an area where stars are being created. So wow. it's a stellar nursery, <laughs> you know? Oh, where? Where? Oh, where? Yeah. Ah. Your best <laughs> I, I, look, I think I spend all my life asking, where? Where? But it's not just constellations which are visible here. It's so dark that you can spot something rarely seen from Britain these days. Can you see just above the top of Orion, stretching from the horizon there all the way over? You see that? Any idea what that is? The Milky Way? Yes. <laughs> um, it's the Milky Way, which is our galaxy. Um, it's the galaxy that we live in. It's a vast thing, and there's about 400 billion stars in it. And our sun is just one of them. Ancient philosophers suspected the Milky Way was a vast number of distant stars, but it wasn't until 1610 that Galileo got proof. If we could see it from the outside, it would look similar to this. The entire galaxy is rotating, but takes 250 million years just to complete one orbit. Now, to give you an idea of scale, uh, can you see that tree, that big, huge tree that's sort of probably about 10 metres away from us there? If we had an entire Milky Way galaxy shrunk down to the size of 10 metres, then our solar system would probably fit on the head of a pin. Doesn't that give you an idea of scale? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah light travelling at 186,000 miles per second will travel for 100,000 years to get to the <laughs> other side of the galaxy. Which is just incredible, isn't it? It's truly amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this many stars, even on, on camping trips and so on. Oh, oh Meteor! Oh, I saw that one! <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Happy days. We can go home now. Skies as dark as this are disappearing. Fewer than 10% of people in the UK can now see the Milky Way. By polluting the night sky with light, we're spoiling the immense beauty of the stars and it's costing us the Earth. But when you come somewhere like this, it makes you realise just how much we're missing out on. I don't know about anything else, Mark, but I know what I want for Christmas now. I want one of those star They're pointer things. Aren't they? Like your own lightsaber. Fantastic Are you just going to point randomly oh, at the yeah, sky? I can't see anything. I'm going to walk around like that at night with it. Look, I want one of them. 
<laughs> Get me one. They are amazing, aren't they? You like me. You have to be careful with aircraft, of course. Yes. There's, there's a lot of concerns with... Uh, I know, all right. I know I want one. I'll Don't cause an accident. I know I will. be just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it. Yes, going back to the park, yeah. it's a pretty amazing spot, isn't it? It was incredible. It's very cold, but mm. it's the darkest place in the UK. It's miles away from lights and it's miles away from any industrial pollutants. The sky was just incredible there. Really amazing. Bernard, do you like looking at the odd star yourself? Yes, I do, yes. Um, yes, I, we were just talking just then about um, Orion's Belt in the southern sky and the, you know, the North Star and all that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And I remember when I was a kid up in Lancashire in Oldham where I was born, one night going to bed and looked out of the window and there was the Aurora Borealis in the northern sky. And, you know, that's amazing. Not a lot of people in this country actually see it here, mm. do they? No, I mean, it, it's very rare to see it this far south. It's yes, normally indeed. a sort of North Pole kind of thing. These but, yeah, sort of very rare. luminous green mm. curtains in the sky. Yeah, right. Stunning. Absolutely Going back stunning. to the Star of Bethlehem, yes. there have been lots of different theories, haven't there, as to what it was? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's talk of it being an exploding star. There's talk of it being uh, a comet, which a lot of the sort of depiction show it's a comet. Um, probably the chances are it's actually down to astrology um, is where we find the answer. The wise men turned out to be um, internationally renowned astrologers um, and they, were, they, they saw Jupiter, which is known as the king planet in the world of astrology, and the star called Regulus, which is the king star. Jupiter went past Regulus um, a couple of times during the period around the, by the birth of Christ. Mm. And of course they saw that and they thought that was a symbol to say there was going to be a new king yeah. was born. Um, and it actually took about four months for Jupiter to move backwards in the sky and that had been probably the length of time they were travelling on their camels to get to Bethlehem. Mm. So that is one of the best answers we've ever had on this show. Oh, we love on the one show. Yeah. Merry You're Christmas. Great, Mark. yes, yeah. you are. <laughs> the classic nativity scene star of Bethlehem included is probably